Hi guys, today we're going to go over how to clean pod filters. What's going on guys? That's right, today we are going to be cleaning these pod filters. Um, the reason I wanted to do this video, for those of you who follow the channel, uh, you know that I'm getting an aluminum air box for my Banshee. And uh, these pod filters are going to be going in there, so I want to have them ready by the time the filter gets here. The filter just shipped out, so that means it was manufactured, and um, it could even get here today. So I want to get these things cleaned up. So the reason I wanted to do pod filters, um, I do have a video cleaning traditional foam filters. You guys can check that out too. Um, but a lot of people run pod filters on Banshees. They run them on all kinds of stuff. Um, these ones are knockoffs. They're not actually K&N. A lot of people call these K&N style filters. Um, they're very simple and they're easy to maintain and you can pretty much wash them an unlimited amount of times as long as you're careful with them. You don't crush them and you don't use the wrong chemicals on them. Really simple to do. I'm just going to show you how I do it. Uh, there's probably other ways to clean it too. This is just the way that I do it. So check it out guys. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is make a hot soapy water mix. So we're just going to wait for the water to heat up here. And then we're going to fill our bucket with water. Just rinse it out, make sure there's no dirt or anything in there. And you can add in some degreasing soap right here. We're just using regular dish soap. So now that we have that topped off, we're just gonna take our filters and we're gonna dunk them in there and make sure that they're fully submerged. So here they are submerged in the water. I didn't take any pictures of them beforehand to show that they were dirty, but these were pretty dirty. Water's really hot. All right, guys, I'm hoping you can hear me all right. So these have been sitting for about five minutes. You can let them soak longer if you want to, if you have really thick, you know, nasty, dirty filters. The longer you let them sit, the longer, or um, the better it's gonna be and the softer the dirt and everything's gonna get so that it'll come off a lot easier. So what we're gonna do now is take Awesome. This stuff is really good for breaking down oils and all kinds of contaminants and just spray it on the whole surface of the filter. And then leave it sit. Do the same thing with the other one. You just wanna make sure that you're getting in all the grooves and everything. Now you can actually just let this sit and rinse it out. And a lot of times that'll get a lot of the dirt out. If you have a lot of chunks and you know clay and stuff wedged in the, uh, the grooves and crevices, you can use something like this. This is like a medium, a medium coarse uh, brush. I wouldn't go too heavy on the brush, you know, as, as far as firmness, you don't want to damage anything. And too soft, it won't get the dirt out. So you can take something like this and just lightly go over it. And if you have really bad dirt, like an up wedged up in here and stuff, you can take a screwdriver and pick it out, but be careful not to ruin the screen. There's a fine screen mesh that goes over the filter and you can bend that out of shape pretty bad with a screwdriver if you're not careful. So now what we're gonna do is rinse out the, um, the cleaner and the dirt. And you don't wanna squirt it on the outside going in because when these are sucking in air, that's the way that the dirt particles are going. So if you shoot uh, inward, you're just jamming the dirt particles further in the fibers. So what you want to do is put your hose or your sink on the inside and shoot water outward and push all the dirt out. It doesn't have to be like a crazy strong stream. If you're doing it in a sink, that's fine too. Just run the water from the inside of the filter out. So 
So this one is clean pretty much after the first round. You can see it's got that nice like reddish pink color again. I don't really see any dirt. Now these weren't super dirty. This is just one ride, but it was pretty muddy and I sucked in a lot of uh, muddy water. Now if you have really dirty filters, you can repeat the process as many times as you want. So for now, this one's pretty good. I might uh, shoot it down one more time with Awesome just to, for good measure and clean up like the black portion on here. But otherwise, this is good to go. So these are both clean now. Cleaned the, uh, the black portion too. So what we're gonna do is just kind of shake them out and we'll leave them in the sun. Just like so, you can rotate them if you want. But otherwise, if you just leave them out for a couple hours, they'll be nice and dry. Now on a day like today, it's like 85 degrees out, which is crazy, because it's almost October in Pennsylvania. But I'm not complaining. Day like today, it shouldn't take too long for them to dry out. And guys, I just wanted to show you this water. You can see all the dirt that's settled in the bottom. And that's just from dunking them. Most of the dirt and stuff got washed into the stones. But that's just an idea to show you the dirt does come out. There's a good amount of dirt in those. All right, so these things have been sitting out here for, I don't know, probably two hours. But you can see they look really nice and clean. All right, guys, so these filters are clean. These ones are pretty easy. Like I said, they weren't that dirty to begin with. Um, if you are consistent with maintaining these, you'll never really have a problem with them getting super gunked up. Um, just because that's just how things tend to work. When you let things build up and build up and build up, it becomes really hard to clean them off and you get clumped in like hard and dirt and everything. So it's a good idea to keep up your maintenance. Really, this is a super quick job. It takes a little bit longer because I'm filming it right now, but it's like a five minute job. It's really easy to do. And if you have pod filters, I would do it after every single ride. Um, right when you get back, do it. And then you put the filters back on and they're dry by the next time you ride. Now, if you do decide to oil these, you don't have to, but this is a K&N oil filter, or oil, four filters. And um, if you can see there, this little ridge on the, on the uh, applicator, that's actually meant to go in the grooves of the filter, and you just lay a bead of oil on each rib, and that's how you oil the filter. Like I said, I'm not doing that today with these. Um, some people don't oil their filters, other people do. The reason that you do oil it is because the oil attracts dust and dirt and stuff, and it uh, makes this a little bit less porous, so the dirt and stuff doesn't get in, but it also does clog it up sometimes. Uh, so it's up to you whether or not you use it. This here is another type of oil, it's a spray oil. Now this one's for foam filters, but they do make it for paper filters as well and sprays. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it guys. It's a super easy job to do. Um, I still have my air box coming in the mail. It's gonna go right here. Well, that could even come today or tomorrow. Hopefully it comes soon. Um, waiting for the parts for the 250EX and also I might be tearing into the KTM to see what's going on at the bottom end or I might just sell that thing. I'm not really sure. I'm gonna have a video on that really soon. Anyways guys, enjoy the rest of your week. I appreciate y'all watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already and hit that little notification bell next to the subscribe button. That way YouTube will let you know when my videos are coming up. And otherwise guys, I'll see you in the next video.